All right, let's kind of let's get into it uh, this morning. Again, I'm Pastor Craig Ellison, pastor here of Celebration Assembly. It's great to be in the house of the Lord with you this morning. We are in our series, and where is the fruit? Where is the fruit? And today, it's a whole series on the fruit of the Spirit. Today, we are looking at faithfulness. I was just telling Jordan before service, I said what I should have done is I should have really, if I thought about it, I should have really planned to start this service or to start this whole series at a specific time where today would have been thankfulness if I played that out. But you know what? I didn't think of that at the time, but faithfulness is still good for Thanksgiving. And so let us look at what the Spirit is telling us about how, again, we don't produce faithfulness. You can't be faithful on your own. You're only faithful through Christ. How can I know Christ enough to be faithful? In, and here's the thing. It's hard sometimes. It's hard a lot of times to remain faithful. I mean, I'll, you know what? The shocking statistic about how hard it is to be faithful is that even in, even in our churches, unfortunately, the faithfulness of marriages is about the same as the world. About the faithfulness of marriages. The divorce rate is basically the same whether you say you're a Christian or not. That is the saddest thing I hear. This place should be zero. Can I get an amen? The church should be zero. Zero. God hates, divo God hates divorce, period. Read the word. I'm being honest with you. The, the church should be the example of zero divorces, and the world should look at that and say, I want that. You know, amen? The world, the, the world wants that. And so anyway, we need to remain faithful through the Lord Jesus Christ, and through the Lord Jesus Christ, we remain faithful to what he has for us. And so let us turn into our Bibles as we do every single week, or every single week during, our, during our series here to Galatians 5. So I'm not going to read the whole thing because of time, and we've read this enough times, but let's stand to the reading of the word. If you have your Bibles or your phones or however you get the word of God, there's Bibles in front of you. The word is going to also be uh, you know, in front of you up on the screen as well. But Galatians 5, and I'm going to, I'm going to read a little bit, then I'm going to skip a little bit, and then I'll read, but I'll, you, can, you can follow along and you'll know where I am. But we're going to start in 16. All right, so I say, verses 16, so I say, walk in the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict. I'm sure we feel that. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit which we pray that we are by the leading of God, you are not under the law. Let's skip to verse 22. Let's skip the flesh part. We don't need the flesh part. Let's go to the spirit part. Verse 22, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, which is today, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ, those that are here that are Christians, that are belong to Christ Jesus, have crucified the old creation. They have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord God, as I hold your word up, I pray that, Lord, you open your word to us today. Please, Lord, we need it. Open your word today, and here's my prayer. Many of us, me included, need to learn to be more faithful. I need to exuberate more faithfulness in my life. Help us, Lord Jesus, to take your word and to be more faithful, Lord God, to our spouses, at our workplace, at our schools, Lord God, with our kids, wherever it may be. May we be faithful to what you have given us in your most holy name. Amen. Amen. This message is for everyone. There is an area of our life I'm sure you need to be a little more faithful in. Well, and marriage just is the big one. That's the big one. When you think of faithfulness, it's in your marriage. But what about at work? Are you just giving work half of, I mean, are you giving, are you just kind of half there at work or half there at school? 
and you're not really being faithful to what you have. You, God is, you know, God gave you your job. He's given you school. He's given you your family. He's given you this and that. And he, he wants you to be faithful in what he has given you. Our scripture for today for faithfulness is found in Deuteronomy 7, 9. And it says this. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. God is good, but here God is God. He is, what does it say? Say it together. Faithful. He is the faithful God. Keeping his covenant, keeping his promise of love to a thousand generations of those, basically he's saying to all generations, to those who love him and keep his commandments. Amen to that. Faithfulness, Here's, here, here's your space. Here's a definition. Faithfulness is a continuous, unrelenting devotional to a faithful God. Leave that there for a second. Faithfulness, if you heard nothing today, this is it. Underline it, underscore it, whatever. Faithfulness is a continuous, not a just one-time act. Not a just one-time act at the altar. Or one-time thing. No, it's a continuous. Always doing it. Oh, I love the Lord, so you're continuing. Oh, you know, things are going well. You know, things are, whether things are going well or bad, it's a continuous, unrelenting. That means that you'll never stop. You never stop. I'm going to do it all the time, and I'm never going to stop. I'm unrelenting. Devotion to a faithful God. Now, that looks easy, but it's not. Many of us really can be faithful when things are going well. When things are going well in our life, we're feeling good, things are kind of in motion, the kids are well, everything, work is great, school is great. Yeah, oh, it's easy to have faithfulness in the Lord. But when things aren't going well, do you still have that same continuous, unrelenting devotion to our God? That is the hard part. That is when the rubber hits the road, is when something Bam! Gets in the way between us and the Lord. Are you still that unrelenting to, to just run after God when you're tired, when you're sick, when you're ill, when there's a crisis in your family, when there's a crisis in your life, when the doctor says you have this or that, or when your spouse has this or that? Do you still have that continuous, unrelenting devotional to a faithful God? Our faithfulness is anchored upon a faithful God. Our life is always built on the trustworthiness of a faithful God. Without that, without that faithfulness, there can be no basis for faithfulness. We cannot be faithful to someone that is not faithful. We cannot be faithful to someone or to a God that is inconsistent or disloyal. We must have a consistent stability of a God that is faithful for us to follow. There will be no ground for faith and faithfulness. We can be faithful today because we know of a God who is absolutely faithful. His faithfulness is the reason that we are faithful today. Jesus is the reason you're faithful, not because of ourselves. We cannot be faithful on ourselves only because of the trustworthiness and the faithfulness of our God. Can I get an amen? Amen. Thank you. Good to hear you were still alive. That's awesome. All right. My first point for you is that find comfort. All right. Wow. Sweet. Little music there. All right. Getting us all awake. I love it. Good morning. All right. <laughs> oh, Zach, that's awesome. Anyway, first point. Find comfort in God's faithfulness. We can go right back to the uh, pa uh, right back to my message there, son. Uh, we'll do worship later. We'll, we'll 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 do that later. But find comfort in God's faithfulness. Amen. Amen. God is fully dependable. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to. Is oh, there we go. Okay. I thought there wasn't a problem with the computer. God is fully dependable. God is fully trustworthy. That must be a conviction of our life. You cannot possibly be faithful to someone you distrust. If you don't trust them, 
then you're not going to be faithful. That's why you need to trust God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. If I allow unbelief or doubt to take root in my heart, faith in God will diminish, and so goes my faithfulness. You want your faithfulness built? You continue to follow the Lord. Feed on God's word. Feed on it. You want to know how to grow in your faith? Feed on God's word. I cannot say that enough. I say that all the time like a broken record because all of us probably do not read the word enough. The sad thing is, and I said this to our C group on Wednesday, or at least the C group I was in on Wednesday, that in the assemblies of God, we have taken surveys upon surveys upon surveys. And the sad thing is that the thing is, is that what is hurting, not just the assemblies, but what is hurting the church, the church as a whole, is that even its people are biblically illiterate. Matter of fact, even on Wednesday, last Wednesday in our, in our, in our pastor's group, when we got together for prayer, we were just so, we are just so saddened to know of how many truly, even believers, don't really know the word. I mean, I could probably come up here and I could say, I could, I could quote something and say Hezekiah 3, 4, and some of you would probably try to look for that book. And it never exists. I mean, do you even know if, if I would say, you know, Opinions 4, 3 or Hezekiah 8, 4, do we know right away that's not a book? Do you know the books of the Bible? Do you know where to see them in the Bible? Do you know where to flip with them in the Bible? Do you know that if a crisis in your life, do you know the scriptures to run to? Do you know when there's a certain thing in your life which scripture will hold you fast and comfort you during that time? Again, the saddest thing that I've ever had in my ministry is when my wife was in children's ministry and they talked about Noah's Ark and they thought it was a ride in the Dells. They did not even know that own story. That is our kids. How, how, do your kids know the Bible stories? Matter of fact, a lot of our kids don't even know where to turn in the Bible. That is our kids, our kids. Are we even doing our job as parents to letting our kids know where to turn? I mean, the kids in there don't even know where to turn. They don't have an idea. And it starts from us. Are we training the kids that where, where, the, where to turn? Where to go? That Noah's Ark isn't a ride in the Dells, that truly there was a Noah's Ark? Are we, because here's the thing, if we don't do our job to the next generation, every generation's going to know less and less and less until it's gone. In my day, when my day, there used to be something called cassettes, and before streaming. And so on cassettes, you know, what, what you had your master. Now, you shouldn't have done this, but we all did this. You had your master. You had your master, whatever it was at that time, which let's say DC Talk. That was a big one I listened to in the day. DC Talk, but you wanted to make a copy of it. So you had a dual cassette thing and you went from the original to the copy. Now, did it work? Yeah, it sure did. But if you listen to the copy, it just wasn't as good as the original. You know, now with DVD, well, DVDs are even old now, but with DVDs, it's definitely streaming. Even if you make copies, it'll sound the same because it's all digital. But with cassettes, when you would go from original to a copy, the copy was a little faded. Then if you wanted to make another copy from the copy, that'd even be more faded. And then if you wanted to make another copy from that other copy copy, it'd be faded. Keep fading, fading, fading until you have nothing left. My fear as the pastor of this church and pastors of our community in the United States is that if we don't continue to give to the next generation, there will be a time that cassette is blank and we will be ungodly and not know the Father, not be fearful of the Father, and don't know his ways. And many, 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 many people will die and go to hell. Do your grandkids know the Lord Jesus? Maybe your kids don't know the Lord, but are you teaching your grandkids about the love of the Lord? Are you teaching your grandkids about, about, the, about the Bible stories and, and loving on them and Jesus and, and Noah and Moses? And are you telling the generations to come? That is why I love my, my father-in-law. My father-in-law is my mentor. It's Katie's dad. He pastors the church in Marinette, Wisconsin, the Assembly God Church, doing phenomenal things up there. But the one thing that he has always done, 
always done is he always uh, tells uh, the love of the Lord and not even just to us kids who are all serving in ministry and that's the thing too about a legacy is that all of his kids are serving in ministry and that's a praise God report because my in-laws were first generation Christians and his love for the Lord was so evident that all of his kids are now serving in the ministry and so that is awesome and that's a praise God and that's a legacy I think we should all we should all have and strive for and the thing is, is that, um, like, I know what Christmas is coming up, and he'll pull the grandkids together, and he'll just pray over them and tell them of who God is and the love of the Lord and the Savior. So even if you're a grandparent in here, talk to your grandkids. You might not even have saved kids. Well, but here's the thing. Do you want your grandkids to go to hell? I would hope not. Tell your grandkids. Uh, see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Eternity is real. Eternity is real. And the thing is, is that it's long. But you're go we're all going to go there. We're all going to go there. But where are we? So remain faithful into your love for the Lord and remain faithful of telling others about who the Lord is. Feed on God's word and build up your faith through the reading of the word. Become biblically literate. Become biblically literate. Know the scriptures that when you're hurting, here's a scripture for that. When you're tired, here's a scripture for that. When your friend needs a pick-me-up, that you have scripture for it. Use scripture. Read scripture. Memorize scripture. If that means that you have to write it on uh, index cards and put it up on your mirror when you get ready in the morning, even as your pastor, what do I have in my bathroom? I have a sheet of paper on my, on my mirror when I'm brushing my teeth, and it has scriptures of what I need, scriptures on my mirror. So I'm brushing my teeth, I'm reading scriptures. I'm reading scriptures because I need more. I need to read scripture. I need it to become part of me. I want it just to soak me. I want it to invade me so that when the crisis hits, you're not like, oh no, Oh no, what was that scripture? Oh, I could really use that scripture. Oh my goodness, where is that? Where is that? You have your phone and you're looking at, oh, I don't know it. But if you just kind of let it be yours, let it become you, let the word just kind of uh, absorb you, let the word absorb you, then you know that in and out of season, you can bring up a scripture. Now here's the thing, you might not know exactly in the Bible where it was, that's okay, that's a little harder, but you at least know a scripture right away. Because when Satan attacks, and you know what, he will, when he attacks, you can say, all right, bring it on. Bam, here's the word, bam, here's the word, bam, here's the word, bam, here's the word. You have no authority in my family. You have no authority in my kids. You have no authority in the church. You have no authority in the family because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You take that and you go where you need to go. You tell Satan where to go. And I mean that because we're in a spiritual battle in here. We are in a spiritual battle for the souls of our kids and grandkids. And we need to remain faithful to the Lord and what God has given us. Get to know the word. Get excited about the word. Read the word in and out of season. And God has some awesome plans for that. Look for God's work and remind yourself of his goodness. Faithfulness of God is greatly celebrated in the Bible. Let's look at what the word says. Psalm 145, 13, your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all of his promises and what? Say it out loud. Faithful in all he does. Amen. Let's read the next one. Psalm 57, 10. For great, is the, for great is your love reaching to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Amen. Psalm 105 says, For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His what? His faithfulness continues through all generations. 2 Timothy 2, 11 to 13 says, If we died with him, we will also live with him. Hallelujah. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, if we disown him, he will disown us. Now, I love this. If we are faithless, if we are faithless, he will remain faithful. Faithful, even if you fall, even if you cannot get up, he will remain faithful and always have his hand towards you. Why? Because he cannot disown himself. Because he cannot be something he isn't. Hebrews 6 says this, because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the ears of what was promised, he confirmed it with a promise or an oath. 
God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we have fled to take hold of the hope that is before us. May we greatly encourage, be greatly encouraged. We have this hope. We have this hope of the Lord as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. Amen? Amen. Get excited for the Lord today. His purpose is sure. God's will does not change. It doesn't need to. Why does, why, why does God will need? It doesn't because it is perfect. If he needs to make corrections to his plan, then he isn't God. He cannot be all wise and all knowing if he changes his plans. His promises or his oaths are sure and they're yes and they're amen. When, we, when he speaks, when he speaks, it's eternal. You have my word. God's given you the word and his word will not return void. That's the thing about his word. It will never return void. They, they, his word goes and accomplishes what it said. So when you use the word, it's power. When you use the word, it's not like quoting from a, your favorite novel. No, those are dead words. They don't have any life. But when you quote the words of scripture, there is life, there is hope, there is healing, there is forgiveness. There is things you need in your life when you profess the word. Word, there's power when you profess the word there's truth don't um, say only the word you know you don't have to come but just say the word what did the, what was that just say the word and you will be healed just even say the word God I'm not even worthy the Bible says I'm not even worthy Lord but just say the word just say your just say the word and I shall be healed and his word is right here here's, here's his word right here Use his word. Let his word speak to you. It's the number one way God is going to speak hope and life into your life. God's purpose and promise. God's will and word will not change. Take it to the bank. Take it. Take it to the bank. It will not change. You see the extent God goes to to assure us of his faithfulness. Jeremiah 31, you can follow along. Jeremiah 31 says this. This is the promise or the covenant that I will make with people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. This is the promise that the Lord is making. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. This is what the Lord says. He who appoints the sun to shine by day, who decrees the moon and stars to shine by night, who stirs up the seas so that its waves war, the Lord Almighty is his name. Only, only if these decrees vanish from my sight, declares the Lord, will Israel ever cease becoming a nation before me. This is what the Lord says. Only if the heavens above can be measured and the foundations of the earth below be searched out will I reject all the descendants of Israel because of all they have done, declares the Lord. Now, God highlights the impossibility that his plans would ever change. God cannot go back on his word. Why? Because he is faithful. His promises are yes and amen. 1 Thessalonians 5.24 says this, The one who calls you is what? Is faithful. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. God, where are you? He'll do it. Remain faithful. What we have is an eternal security. We can be faithful because God himself is faithful. We can strive. We are co-heirs with Christ, which means we are co-heirs with him, which means if, if he can be faithful, we can through him. We are called to be just like Christ, and if he is faithful, we can be faithful as well. Here's the next one. Be faith, be, uh, put value in faithfulness, not in your results. Your results are, sometimes the results aren't going to turn out the way you like, and then we lose faithfulness. No, 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 no. Put value in faithfulness, not in the results. This is how God spells success. Faithfulness is what God is looking for. A successful Christian is actually a faithful Christian. Did you hear that? A successful Christian is actually a faithful Christian. 
because success is not based on results. It's not. You might fail in a lot of things. That doesn't mean you're not faithful. Look at, your, look at our marriage. Is it perfect? No. No, but any stretch of the imagination. But we're going to be faithful. We're going to remain. Yeah, do we fight? Yeah, sure. We might fight. We might fight good fights. But the thing is, is that we remain faithful to work through those. Through the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not based on results, but it's on your faithfulness. Results are the gracious works of God. Faithfulness is what we can offer him. Jesus emphasized in, this, in the parable of the talents in Matthew 25. Remember that? The context is very enlightening. In Matthew 24, he starts to talk about, Jesus starts to talk about the signs of the times. Then later in Matthew 24, he talks about that the day and the hour we do not know. And then in Matthew 24, 45, it says this, Who then is the faithful and wise servant, whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time? It will be good for the servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. Matthew 25 then talks about also the parable of the ten virgins. We need to be prepared. Be faithful. I mean, Matthew 24 and 25 talk all about the faithfulness of God. He will surely come back. Why? Because Jesus is faithful. And he says, and he does. You can bank it, take it to the bank, and trust his word. Rest in God's faithfulness. Rest in his word. Rest in his promises. Rest that when he says yes, it is a yes. That is faithfulness. Later in Matthew 25, the parable of the talents. In the meantime, put to good use what God has entrusted you. When he comes back, you will hear this. In Matthew, if you remain faithful, this is what you're going to hear from the Lord in Matthew 25, 21. Well, and who doesn't want to hear this? Who doesn't want to hear this? Well done, good and what? Faithful, good and faithful servant. You have been what? Faithful with a few things, and I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Here's the thing. When you die, and you're a Christ follower, and you die and you hear this, God could have said any number of things that you are, but no, he wanted to tell you specifically why you're in heaven, because you're faithful. Not be, just because you're a good person that does a lot of good things. No, it's because you're faithful. And he says it twice. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. See, here's the thing. So you're in front of the Lord Jesus. You made it into heaven. And he said, you have been faithful in a few things. He didn't say you've been good in a few things. You've been thankful in a few things. You've done. No, the one thing that he really is measuring here is that your faithfulness. Faithfulness, faithfulness, faithfulness. Now here's the thing. There are going to be times in your life, in your walk with the Lord, just in your marriage, you will fall. You will fall. Something will happen. Either you'll turn away from the Lord, you'll walk away from the Lord, or just something happens. God's not looking at how you fall. He's looking how you pick yourself up again and you continue to go. At the end of Matthew 25, then he talks about the sheep and the goats. He identifies us by our kind deeds because that shows our true faith in being in him. It is very clear from the scriptures that God is looking for faithful people. Faithful, faithful, faithful. God's number one thing in heaven is well done, thou good and faithful servant. God told Noah to build an ark. Talk about, let's talk about faithfulness for a second. Sometimes it's, hard to, sometimes it's hard to stay on a task for five minutes or ten minutes. Sometimes it's hard to pray for 15. Let's see how long it took Noah to build an ark. It took him over a hundred years to build an ark and he never saw rain. Talk about faithfulness. Talk about faithfulness over a hundred years to build something and he didn't even know what rain was or seen rain, but yet to build an ark? Many of us maybe could have held out for like, okay, I'll give you a week. I'll give you a week. I will build what I can and we'll see what happens. All right, I'll give you a, I'll give you a month. I'll give you a year. I'll give you, now, but just think a hundred years. I would think that, oh, let's just think, just think at 95 years, you know what, I think I'm kind of done. I think I'm done. I don't think we're going to see this. Just think if Noah did that. Just think if after 95 years, Noah just said, you know what, you know, we try, you know, you know the mic drop? It's a, in his days, it was a hammer drop. He drops the hammer, 
and he just says, we're done. <laughs> we're done. I was faithful. I, I, Lord God, I did whatever I could. I, I, I did whatever I could. I, I did what you've said. I mean, people are making fun of me all the time. They're always coming in front, and maybe this is how you feel. God, I'm trying to remain faithful. I have tried to remain faithful. But Lord God, you see my family. You see uh, what's going on here. You know, you see people making fun of me. Lord, nothing is getting answered. Where are you? Remain faithful. Just think, if Noah did that at year 95, there would have been no hope for the world. But he remained faithful all the way through until it was done. You might be right now feeling, God, I've prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And this could be your 95th year. Wait a little bit. God will remain faithful. It takes faith in God and faithfulness to God. Noah has never seen rain. And there were no signs of even this so-called rain coming for a long time. But he remained faithful even when people made fun of him and mocked him. And the rain yet did not come. Now, look at this when the Bible even mentions Moses. In Hebrews 3, 5, Moses, let's look at Moses now. Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's house, bearing witness to what would be spoken by God in the future. Jeremiah prophesied and preached to the same people for over 40 years. Talk about the faithfulness if you stop Jeremiah. Jeremiah prophesied and preached to the same people 40 years over and over and over again. And very few people listened. But he continued to do what God told him to do and say what God told him to say to be faithful. Are you willing to do that? Over and over again and over again. In our modern time, we can easily conclude that Jeremiah was a failure. But success in the world's view may not be the same success in is the final scripture, and many times it's not. God wants our faithfulness, not our success. It's the next space there, son. God wants our faithfulness, not our success. We are not responsible for the results. We are responsible for our own faithfulness. Paul tells Timothy, 2 Timothy 2.2, he says this, 2 Timothy 2.2, And the things you have heard me say, be witnesses and trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. A quote from, C. H., uh, from Spurgeon says this, I know of nothing which I, could, what I, which I would choose to have as the subject of my ambition for life than to be kept faithful to my God until death. Do you have the same passion as Spurgeon did? We're not called to be successful, church, but we're called to be faithful. Can God depend on you? Can he depend on you not to be perfect, not to have everything lined up in ducks in a row, but just to be faithful to him, to do what he said you to do and to remain faithful to it. To be unfaithful is to do your own thing and to keep doing your own thing. So what can we do? So what can we do? First of all, determine what God wants for you. Determine what God wants for your life. God has a calling on each one of your lives in this room. Each one of your lives has God as a calling. You need to discover that. How do I discover that? You keep seeking God. You keep reading the word. You keep seeking what he has for you. A lot of people just don't think about that, though. We don't usually care about what God wants. A lot of times we care about what we want, and then we ask the Lord to bless our mess. Paul says in Ephesians 4, first part he says of one, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling that you have each in this room have now received. Live according to the calling that God has given you. What does that mean to be faithful? To be faithful we must and we need to invest what God has entrusted for each one of you. So seek God. Listen to his voice. Start serving. Be involved in ministry. Next slide there, son. It's a journey of discovering God's design for your life. The passions, the, the secrets. No, actually number 30 there. Oh yeah, you're on the right one. 
It's a journey of discovering God's design for your life, the passions, the interests, the gifts, the opportunities that he's given each one of you. We are, we are not called to do everything. You can't. If you try to do everything, chances are you're going to miss something that particularly God wanted you to do. Jesus himself did not attempt to do everything possible. He was mindful of focusing on the specific work that the Father has called him to. If we are distracted and sidetracked into doing 101 things and miss out on the one thing God wants us to do, then we are being unfaithful. What is the thing that God wants you to do? That's a question we should always ask. I ask that all the time. I'll be honest. God, I, I, I'm very transparent in front of you. God, I've been here 10 years. If there's someone that can do this better than me, then bring that person to this church and I will move on. I always need to be, I always need to be in that mode that says, God, we can never get comfortable. Never get comfortable where you're at. Never get comfortable because that's where Satan, Satan loves to have you in comfort. Because when you're in comfort, you just stay. And the more you stay, you can be comfortable and this just start coasting. And God, if I'm coasting here and someone else can do it better, then go for it. So always invest your time with the Lord and say, God, what am I doing? Am I supposed to be doing what I'm doing? Am I still supposed to be doing what I'm doing? Help me out here, Lord. Always be asking the questions to God. God, what am I to do? What am I to do? What am I to do? Where am I to go? What am I need to do? Who do I need to talk to? Who do I need to pray for? Who do I need to witness to? What do I need to do? Help me in that, and God will speak. Don't drift through life and realize at the end of the day you missed out what God was trying to tell you in the first place, but you never gave him time to talk in your life. Andrew Murray, wonderful, incredible missionary. If you ever get a book of his, read it. It's incredible. Faithfulness is that which God meets us in secret. So on our part, there should be the childlike simplicity of faith, the confidence that our prayer does bring down a blessing. Next one, my last point I have for you today is be faithful in the little things. Be faithful in the little things. We just read that scripture. Well, the, well done, now good and faithful servant. You, you've, you've been uh, obedient to the little things, now here are the bigger things. Faithfulness in the little things is a big deal to God. We are to be faithful to the gifts and opportunities God gives us. We tend to think of living the Christian life as giving to God once and for all. We gave, we're done. It does not work that way. It's more of a continuous, a daily doing of God's will, little by little by little by little. It's like, here's a little story. It's like taking a thousand dollar bill and laying it at the altar and say, all right, here's all that I have for you. Here it is, God, I'm giving you it all. But no, what does God want? He just doesn't want you to give it all right there. But what God wants you, God wants us to go to the bank and exchange that thousand dollars for ten cent for ten cent dimes. And we go through life serving him, putting ten cents here, putting ten cents here, putting ten cents here, putting ten cents here. We see a sick person and, and, and we pay them a visit. There's 10 cents. We give a cup of water uh, to an old man in a nursing home. Here's another 10 cents. We listen to a neighbor's troubles. And instead of just saying, I'm busy, you pray over them. Here's another 10 cents. That's giving, of our, of giving life to God, done in little acts, 10 cents at a time. It is easy to have a sudden emotion to dedication and a sudden burst of energy. And then it usually dies. It is harder to live the Christian life little by little. It is harder to live the Christian life day by day, giving day by day, than it is just to give God, bam, here it is in one shot. Matthew 25, 21, B says this, you have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many. Come and share your master's happiness. Before we come to the altar today, I want to share a story with you. True story. Little gruesome, but it's true. And maybe some of you know the story, and you know the missionary and the pastor. If not, great man of God. In the, in the 1840s, 
years and many years ago. In the 1840s, John Getty left the pastorate. He left his church and he left the pastorate, like a lot of pastors do, to become a missionary. He left the pastorate of a church in Canada to take his wife and two small children completely to the other side of the world, to the South Sea Islands, to begin a mission work there. After a voyage, listen to this, again, they didn't have airplanes back then, so he took a boat ride of 20,000 miles. That is a long time. They arrived in the new Hebride Islands at Ant Anitum. Now, that's down in the Australian area, off of Australia. Canada, Australia. It's going to take you a while. God heard him, and he answered God. The island chain, though, just think of this. Comfort, love in Canada, feeling called. Here's the thing. This tribe were cannibals. True story. The island chain was filled with cannibals. And more than 20 crew members of a British ship just crashed there eight months before he arrived there. They faced, and now, unfortunately, and I'll be honest, this is where the gruesome part is, not only were they killed, but their remains were never found because they were all eaten. So here's the thing. Pastor Canada, probably having a comfortable life in Canada, of course, you know, even in the 1840s, feels called to a place he knows that could eat him. But his God is so faithful. His God is so faithful that no matter whether he dies or lives, he knows he's going to go to heaven. He knows the faithfulness of his God, knowing that, you know what? There's people down by Australia that need the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever they do, I don't care. I need to share because I am so close to my God. I know what he wants. Knowing that these British people, that knowing that these, this British ship just crashed, died, and were eaten alive, he still went. And they faced the difficulty the, this couple faced the uh, difficulty of learning a language that had no written form. This language had no written form and the constant threat of being eaten. Slowly at first, a few converts, uh, slowly, slowly at first, a few, a few converts came and then soon many, many more were receiving the gospel. Getty continued his ministry faithfully, never knowing what was going to happen to his life. He even translated the entire Bible into their native language. And listen to this. On that tribe, what did he do? He planted 25 churches. For many of those years, Getty labored with little help from anyone from home. But the faithfulness of God was his only hope. In the pulpit of the church, I love this part. In the pulpit of the church, Getty pastored for so many years from a tribe that knew not God, never heard God, didn't even have a written word, and would eat people that they didn't know. He came, he faithful, planted 25 churches, translated the Bible. This is what was said on the pulpit where he was for so many years. There was a plaque that the tribe put up at the end of his life, and it said this. When he landed in 1848, there was no Christians here. And when he left this world in 1872, there are no heathens here. It's because of his faithfulness to a God that will always be faithful. Why did I read this illustration? It's because, are you listening to the Lord God in everything that he wants from you? Are you remaining faithful to God or are you comfortable of where you're at? Are you comfortable of your life? Are you comfortable of where your family is at? Are you comfortable of your marriage? Get in mood with God. Get in tune with the spirit of what God has for you. God rewards not success. He rewards your faithfulness. What we need to ask is not for success, but how faithful we need God to be. Board members, if you could come forward, if we could all stand. All heads down and all eyes closed. 
I'm going to end in prayer. And then when we go to our last song, the altars are open. We have elders at, our, at, our, at the sides of the stage that want to pray for you no matter what you're going through. No matter what trouble you're going through. They want to pray with you. They want to love on you. They want to anoint you with oil. And Lord, they want to pray healing over you. As I close, what is the Holy Spirit speaking to you? Where do you need healing in your life today? Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this church and I thank you for its people. Lord God, may we find comfort in your faithfulness. May we find value in your faithfulness and not in our own results. May we determine to seek you, to read your word, to seek, to seek, to seek what you want for us to do. That unrelenting, that unrelenting devotion to you. May it be said that in our life we've never quit running towards you. And may we be faithful in the little things. Because those will become big things in the eyes of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, may we be faithful in all we do. Lord God, right now, and right before I close, I want you to examine your hearts, church, right now. Are you faithful in your marriage? Now, I'm not saying that you're having an extramarital affair. But do you look a little, you know, as you're on Facebook or social media, do you sometimes kind of wish, boy, if I was only married to that person or if I only had sex with that person? Are you remaining faithful in your thoughts? Are you remaining faithful at your work? That's the job that God gave you. Are you remaining faithful in that until God moves you on? Are you remaining faithful? Or do you slack off a bit? Ah, you know, the boss, they got money. This company's got money. Who cares? Are you remaining faithful at your school if you're in school? Maybe you're drifting off, but God has brought you there. Are you remaining faithful in your family? Are you remaining faithful to your kids and your grandkids? I know it's hard, but life is short. I want it to be said to everyone in this room, thou faithful servant, I have blessed you with small things and now here are the big things. Bless our church. And may it be said that this church and its people are faithful. In your most holy name, amen. Amen. One last song, altars are open. Let's pray to the Lord as we close.